Happy Sabbath to the 12 tribes of the children of Israel scattered abroad in the name of our Creator, Jehovah and Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King who rules the 12 tribes. Lily of the Valley here bringing you greeting and happy Sabbath. And we're looking today at the children of Israel, which is um, scattered abroad and especially what they go through in Latin America. Okay, there are Israelites in Latin America. The Israelites in Latin America are the ones with Negro skin or the ones who look like burnt brass with woolly hair. The native Indians who were here before, which is of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, also look the same. Those Indians would be like the West Indians who are also Negroes. Or the Seminole freedmen who are also Negroes, or the 12 tribes who are Negroes, not the Caucasian looking modern people who are in the Americas. If you want to know how long the children of Israel who descend from the patriarchs have been in America, it's a mighty long time. It's from the days of the flood. They were coming here, they knew of the Americas. A lot of the gold and the silver was disclosed to the children of Israel first. So we're looking today at census shows African Brazilians in the majority for the first time, but they practice democracy there. Yet you see the blacks there are in the lowest positions. Remember who is in these countries. They are the descendants of the Romans. The Romans are the Caesars. Their descendants were the ones persecuting the early Christians, okay? So don't get it mixed up. Whatever you see is going to be happening to the nations of Esau and Edom and Rome with the slavery, the slaughter, the coming down of their kingdom is because of what they did in the earth from the days of Christ till now. Remember, the Romans fed the early Christians to the wild beasts. Their descendants became like the Spanish Inquisition. And you see what they did to the children of Israel who followed the laws, the statutes, the commandments, the ordinances, the judgment, the Sabbaths, the holy days. They, it was just a constant war against the children of Israel, no matter where the children of Israel went. You can look at the um, early documents of um, New England, like the New England Primer. It has, you know, how our forefathers were fleeing from the of Babylon or the Romans and remember the Latins are descendants of the Romans they are Japheth's children do not get it mixed up do not follow these Hebrew Israelite camps who are not students of history but they're following their flesh okay do not follow them the Israelites are a black nation anybody who is of mixed race is a Gentile because it takes three generations of pure Israelite or black blood to become Israelite. That's in the scriptures. Okay, so don't follow Solomon and the people who want to tell you, hey, you can mix with everybody. Just start mixing within yourself and watch the most high work because he says we need to be purifying the bloodline. Now, a lot of the problems that came up on the Brazilians is because of the idolatry, the carnivals, the things they eat, you know, you know, Catholic countries on a whole. They're just some of the countries with some of the most problems and Muslim countries too, because you got to know who the two beasts are, you know, and the synagogue of Satan, everybody has a role to play in the prophecies. So for the first time since records began, black and mixed race people from the majority of Brazil's population, the country's last census confirmed, yet you don't see them in leadership or in big position so they got to repent down there all you negroes down in brazil if you want your country to be great and to be in leadership you got to be repenting and just start practicing the bible as it is written so it's a people are no longer scared of identifying themselves or insecure about saying i am black and black is beautiful so now you're seeing a lot more brazilians and a lot more Negroes in the Americas identify as black. The last thing they ever wanted to be identified was black. So those are them who, like, you see the policeman saying, I'm black now. We grew up in Latin America, okay? We know how you feel about the children of Israel. 
So Afro Argentines, this is one of the countries that said there are no blacks in Argentina. And they put them on the front line, they're breeding them out. Remember, a lot of the people who went into Argentina, they are the descendants of the Germans from Adolf Hitler's time and also Italians. And they all had the same genetics ideas that you see all over the world today. Same genetics ideas that you see practiced in South Africa. The poison of the water, the eugenics, putting the Negroes on the front lines, that sort of thing. So this is Afro Argentina. For Argentina, it says it has um Argentines are people. Now all blacks are of sub Saharan descent. That's just a lie that they kept telling you because most of us come from the Holy Lands. And our four parents have been in the Americas from the beginning of time. And we live in a land where never mankind dwelt, which is where the ten tribes were, and that's in the book of Edras. So a lot of times you'll see that the blacks get pushed to the side. They get treated the worst. But remember, the prophecy is going to be coming to pass now. We're going to see second Edras coming to pass. 15 verse 21 he wrote about the 10 tribes he said like as they do this, yet this day unto my chosen so will i do also and recompense them their bosoms just said the lord so you see all the slavery all the sacking of jerusalem all the lies they tell in the history and in the church all of that stuff is going to come back upon them at the point when it's their turn and their turn is coming up so if you want to know how these Spaniards and these Edomites relate to Japhet, see Genesis 10. Japhet is in the Isle of the Gentiles, where the Grecians and the Romans became one people. Look in the book of Jasher. Jasher is a history book of the Israelites. Look in the complete works of Flavius Josephus as well, and you will see more of that. You can also look at Josephus versus um, Appian. Okay, so chapter one, the cruelties of the Spaniards committed in America. And this is a short account of the destruction of the Indies by Bartholomew de las Casas. Okay, so then you go through this and you see every single thing that you see in there. It's going to come up on their people. So when you see it happening to Latins and so on, don't say, oh, they fit the curses of Deuteronomy 28. So it's happening to them. Always know what the Israelites look like. And remember, anybody who did the curses that came upon us, it's also going to come back upon them. Okay? So the Spaniards first assaulted the innocent sheep so qualified by the Almighty as pre-mentioned. Like most cruel tigers, wolves and lions, hunger starved, studying nothing for the space of 40 years after their first landing, but the massacre of these wretches whom they have so inhumanely and barbarously butchered and harassed with several kinds of torments, never before known or heard of, which you shall have some account in the following discourse, that of three million persons which lived in Hispaniola itself, there is at present but the inconsiderable remnant of scarce 300. So when you see their um, posterity, Treating the Haitians in Hispaniola, backdating the citizenship and depriving them of citizenship. Now you know where that comes from. When you see them roasting people, crucifying people, chopping them up like meat, this is where it comes from. When you see crucifixion was something that the Romans did, feeding the Israelites to the wild beasts, you know. Obadiah prophesied against um, them, but they don't understand sometimes. They're going to have to do some serious repenting in the earth for the um the recompense not to come upon them. So I'm saying, nay, the Isle of Cuba, which extends as far, you notice how the Negroes are treated in Cuba as well. Same thing in Puerto Rico, all those countries, Colombia, Mexico. I went to Mexico. I didn't see any black people. Two people I saw black. I was one and the other one. A man. I didn't know black people were in Mexico until I met someone from Mexico who told me, yeah, they're Negritos there because they're hidden. So anybody who wants to find the Israelites, they're going to be hidden in the worst places in the earth. Because remember, the Romans, they've revived their empire, their empire now. 
they're gonna be getting exactly what they did to the Israelites so as far as Valeloid in Spain is distant from Rome lies now uncultivated like a desert and entombed in its own ruins you may also find the Isles of St. John and Jamaica both large and fruitful places unpeopled and desolate the Lucayan Islands and the north side now remember the Lucayan Indians the American Indians so you'll know the black Indians who are our people. Not every quote-unquote American native is an Israelite Indian or native Indian. Just the people are the ones who look like the black West Indians, the Negroes, because we retain the Indian name to this day. Josephus tells you we were called Indians and you can also see the same thing in the Chronicles of Jeremiel. And it tells you Amorica is an ancient name so it was not named by Amerigo Vespucci the names goes way back to the Shamites who have always known about this land but it was not populated so when the 12 the 10 tribes came over here it became more populated that time when the Spanish came they came and they killed and they pillaged they raped they destroyed so you can't be doing all of that in the earth and expect to get benefits even though they may reap the benefits for a while retribution or recompense is the most high so you can look at this book it's on wiki a short destruction destruction of the indies by Bartholomew de las casas okay so it says back it, one of the argentine presidents said that their til that back in 1996 president said black people do not exist in argentina Brazil has that problem when asked about the blacks in his country. Remember when Jesus comes back to rescue the children of Israel from their oppressors, they're going to have to give an account what happened to the children that he left in their charge. Since they say the Christ of the Bible sent the apostles to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel to tell them the gospel or the good news and to set up the church so that they could benefit and they could know salvation is coming. He didn't send them to go massacre the children of Israel, which is what a lot of these um, Edomite Spaniards did. Okay. So it's a now Argentina is a white country and they don't have the problems of blacks in their country like in Brazil. So in Argentina, there have been cases of discrimination based on ethnic characteristics or national origin. In turn, racial discrimination tends to be closely related to discriminatory behavior for social economic and political reasons so when you see their economic and other pains come upon them remember a lot of those they descend from the jesuits and the ashkenaz or the germans they're all the same people you know they a lot of them went to argentina so that's why you find the blacks are not there so much anymore because of what they planned and what they did to them but we ask them to repent because they're going to give an account for their actions, okay? So it said there is a bunch of Italian, Turkish there, told you. Those are the Latins. And remember the Latins and the Ashkenaz, Germans, all those people, they are the same bloodline, see? So when you see these things in the Americas, this is why our four parents had to come here because they all have targeted the children of Israel. See? A lot of the Ashkenazis are down there. Okay? A lot of the Russian immigrants are down there. So when you see things like, but the Negroes, nobody teaches them who their enemies are. And the Bible said, trust not thine enemy. And Psalm 83 lists the people who are the enemies of the children of Israel. Now where the negra, negra comes from, it's a negrode meaning black. It's nigger in N-I-G-E-R in Acts 13 verse 1. Simeon also called nigger or niger was one of the disciples of Christ. And yes, there were many of the disciples who were in North Africa and all over the world. And they were sent to spread the gospel of the good news of Christ. So... A lot of our people will be living in marginalized communities, in slums, ghettos, they call them. 
and it says in 1996 the diplomatic trip to the united states when asked about the black population of argentina president carlos menens remarked black people do not exist in argentina brazil has that problem so negroes if you want to keep the voting for your enemies in um democracy this is what you will get you know our bible says by their deeds you shall know them and don't be a mestizo because if you breed with other nations you're going to become a mestizo and mestizos are gentiles the bible says do not mix with the other nations and you see solomon was destroyed because of that so you need to practice what is called a theocracy okay christ is the head of the children of israel worldwide and once you do the laws the statutes the commandments the ordinances the sabbaths the judgment the faith of jesus christ of nazareth the holy days you can start praying the psalms and you'll start seeing changes and when you start doing them change your diet change your dress forget about the carnival and so on that you do because revelers are not going to be entering the kingdom of heaven so mexico it's the same thing the hidden blacks there you know nobody knows that they're there except for now we kind of hear that oh yeah some of them still did it so it says for the first time i felt deeply uncomfortable about being black when i was a kid the first time I felt deep, well, we don't call our children kids because that have to do with the devil. We call our children kid, children. Kid is have to do with the baby goats. So you notice they're trying to replace the word children with that. It's a demonic attack upon the English language and the Bible. The Bible don't call you kid except when the scapegoat is there. It has to do with the devil or when a lamb was being sacrificed. So don't call your children that. So they, um, my, my family had just moved to Alabama. I was in a car with my father and brother, a white woman with a harshly lined face and brown frizzy hair yelled out a racial slove as we drove by. My daddy immediately put the car in reverse, drove over to her as she pumped gas at the filling station. What did you say? He demanded. She glared at him and refused to respond. Shocked into silence, my brother and I didn't say anything. For the rest of the drive home the second time was in a quaint town in mexico i'm a journalist living in mexico city and i decided to take a trip to vera cruz where hundreds of thousands of african slaves had been brought by spanish colonialists five centuries prior i wanted to visit yanga a place that called itself the first free slave town in the americas the town was named for Gaspar Yanga, a slave who had led a successful rebellion against the Spanish in the 16th century. You also have to learn that because when the people think of every black people as slaves, whether you were free before they came or after, you automatically became a slave. So yeah, we have Janga Gully in Jamaica, which is equivalent to Yanga. We had the Maroons. They were even in the Americas long before slavery and the Israelites were in the Americas long before slavery. So, um, if you want to see, let's see where that is. Where's the lesson on that? I'm going to show you where, okay. Uh, okay. So this lesson on my other channel, the Jamaica 12 tribes, Hebrews from the 12 tribes, uh, Jacob, Israel. It says, American Hebrew Israelites Negro inherited the Holy Lands, the West Americas, the Indies from antiquity. And it goes into great detail as to the timeline when we were in these Americas. So our forefathers lived in the earth, east in Eden, in the earth before the flood. Israelites descended from Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob Reed named Israel. So Negros, that's who you descend from. And we are called the children of the Most High. Okay. Why you're in suffering is when they said to crucify Jesus. In Matthew, they said, let his blood be upon us and our children's children. You can also look at Deuteronomy 28 for the blessings and the curses. Those of the children of Israel who followed the blessings, they received the blessings. 
those who didn't follow the blessings received the curses because that was a covenant the most High made with us and our forefathers so we have negro israelites descendants of shem inherited the lands from 1657 am am means anamundi after the flood to the present lands including the holy lands which is like jerusalem and all of that where we used to live but because we're scattered abroad now we have to be overseas so that the prophecies that have come out will be fulfilled before we get gathered up again to go back into a new heaven a new earth and a new jerusalem so the lands of Havila, Ophir, Shiva, Ophir, Arfa, Saret, Britannia. Notice Ophir and Sheba, those are children of Shem. Arzaret is the Americas. Britannia, the Isles, America, Golden Church, Sunnis, were where the children of Israel were, in addition to where the world was occupied at the time, such as Africa, Asia, Europe. These were the additional places. So the Christ Isles. Of Jesus, that's in the Malay Peninsula, Philippines, the Pacific Islands, parts of India, East Indies, and West India. So we still remain West India today, and West Indies, North, Central, South, Central America is called the New World, and we retain the name of West Indian today. It's not a new name, it came from antiquity, okay. So the Negroes are called West Indians. So when you're looking for the American Indians, they need to look like Negroes to know which ones are our people, which ones are not. Okay. So first address nine verse 34 talks about the Charibis. And that comes from the Char, I think his name is Charbaz Charbazan. Look in address 934. You see where we get the Charibi name from. The Caribs, the Caribbean, the Samba comes from the Samba Tyan River. Remember that river that calmed down on the Sabbath over there in Africa. That's why they call us Sambo Simba. And also the Caribbean has something to do with the cherubs. Okay. See how similar it is to Caribs too? The cherubs, you can read about that in Ezekiel and um, in Genesis where the most I put the cherubims to guard the Garden of Eden. So that's where we get the Zambo, the Garifuna. So this is just some of the tribes I listed. The Mesquita Indians, the Negroes, the Peruda, children of Solomon's servants. Ezra 2 verse 55. So this is where Peru gets his name from. Okay. And a lot of the Negroes were in Peru. And some say it's Ophir. So it tells you in great detail some of the tribes that are ours. And... You have to go through and look at the tribes. So Amorica, that is also listed where Paul's missionary journey to Britain took him. He sailed from Amorica. This is long before Amorica Vespucius. This is like more than 2,000 years ago. And that's page 160 of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle by Alfred the Great. Mary, many of our forefathers descend from King Alfred the Great. So, Armenia, land of Noah, Ark, Ararat was in Shem's territory, and Amorica is also spelled Aremorica from the Celtic AR on and more C, and the Latin name for the northwestern extremity of Gaul, now Brittany. So, all of our people were in these territories long before the um, Caucasians came. So, this and most of the other um, videos go into how to identify the children of Israel in the earth. So, Negroes in America. In the Americas, when you hold up on your head, you hear what the reggae song say, lift up on your head and hold it up. Aye, because we know that we win the prize, okay? So, no make nobody telling us that you're not nobody, and no make nobody telling us that you're not a slave. You descend from the greatest, and your forefathers wrote the Bible, and that's our law book. So, you have to follow it to learn what the Most High wants of you. So look again here, the suffering of our brethren in Brazil. We got to start praying. We got to start visiting. We got to start teaching them. If you have interpreters, let your interpreters interpret the channels or the information so that you know not to let anybody look down upon you. Okay. So this is a story from the Real News Network. Black communities in Brazil under threat from U.S. satellite deal. So every time when you see our people settled in one area, you see the, um, the oppressors come 
and they target our people. You can't live in peace anywhere. And that's why they don't understand why there's a prophecy in Obadiah that they need to study very carefully and to stop their wickedness towards the children of Israel. Because we can only warn them, but if they don't listen, then they're going to have to um, see what happens. Citizenship leaves Dominican Haitian stateless. So this is the Latins, uh, their forefathers, descendants, they do this all the time. So they backdate the citizenship. So the Haitians that were born there, the black ones, they were deprived of citizenship. So those Hebrew Israelites camp who want to tell you that, oh, we're all brethren. We know who are brethren in the earth and our brethren always treat us like brethren. We may squabble a little bit, but the type of things that the oppressors do to us, is just way different than what brethren do to each other. So we're going to look at, um, see what their story says. Okay. Let's see. I'm Lorenzo Vera. I'm descended of black slaves mixed with Indians. I live here in the community of Mamuna. Mamuna is a traditional community on the northeastern coast of Brazil. It's recognized as a quilombo, which means its residents are descendants from black slaves. Their families have lived here for generations. This place is special for so many reasons. It's peaceful. It's calm. It's abundant. It's productive. Everything is special. Everything is in harmony. You can grow vegetables or roots. Everything you plant here will grow. This land is enormously abundant. There's water, the ocean. Everything connected to this land is beneficial. They plant watermelon, fruit trees, and manioc, which they grind into traditional Brazilian flour. They fish on the coast, just a short walk away. Okay. They said they're going to be moving the families. And the last time when they moved them, they promised them, like, you know, those fake contracts that they don't have to honor. When us West Indians lost our lands, our identity and everything, and they just called us slaves, the same contracts they gave them. And then they didn't honor those contracts either. So it's coming up again. This is not the first time that one of Alcantara's black communities here have been under threat. In 1986, more than 300 families living in several Alcantara communities were removed to make way for construction of the initial satellite launch center. They were sent to newly built inland communities. The government promised to compensate families and provide deliveries of food for a year. Almost all promises were broken. Yep, so... It was really when the Bible says, um, your enemies, you cannot trust them and to make no covenants with them. We see it time and time again from the beginning of time till now. So we got to say, okay, what help we can give to our brethren? If you can write the politicians, I don't even know if writing is going to help. Because remember when Harriet Tubman was under siege, you remember what she prayed against her oppressor and what happened? You got to just be righteous again and pray and act towards what you want. You can't be voting. The Bible says we must set one up of another nation to rule over us. The Bible talks about race nations. It doesn't talk about race. So don't put people over you to rule over you. We're not of your same bloodline and your same tribe. And don't make marriages with them. Don't make covenants with them. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. Because the Moses already told us that. But we don't listen. So let's see. I think... There was another story about the Colombians, but it's really all over Latin America it, that you see this happening to the Negroes all over. So, all right, blacks attacked in Colombia, racism in Latin America is the same thing. You understand? So every country that you go where you find our people, 
are in the minority down there or even in the majority you see the same treatment because these are the descendants of the caesars and the herods and the neros and the um japhetites and they have never liked to be righteous and holy towards the most high much less his children so you have to know who you are and you just have to follow the scriptures to get out from some of these things we know it's rough down there but the Brethren, you have in the Caribbean and in the earth. We, 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 we're going to do what we can to help you. So, you know, if y'all need help, you can post on here. We can come visit. Y'all can come visit. Y'all need to learn to get passports, man. That's one of the first things we get when we are born. We get our Bible, our birth certificates, our christening certificate. And we get our passports and we go travel the world. Visit our brethren. Okay, so blacks attacked in Colombia. Racism in Latin America. Pianke Nubiang. Blacks in Choco region of Colombia hiding in church bombed. Racism, genocide, and neglect in Latin America against blacks. One of the first regions settled by ancient Africans for thousands of years before Columbus is the Choco region of Colombia. In fact, in certain areas such as San Augustine, we will see monuments with Negroid featured sculpture holding african america shamanistic objects identical to those used by the ancient oni or priest kings of nigeria see the essay african civilizations of america so choco was one of the primary eras of portuguese and spanish slave reading before columbus's official trip to the americas the slaves were africans who had been living on the coast of colombia for hundreds of years before the arrival of the Europeans to the New World. So remember, our brethren were already here from the BC area. Remember the 10 tribes when they went to Assyria and then they left and they came to the Americas, a land where never mankind dwelt. So they've been over in these Americas, the children of Israel from way back when. All right, so don't let nobody tell us, hey, go back to Africa as your newcomer. We are indigenous to the, the Americas, indigenous to parts of Europe, indigenous to parts of Asia, indigenous to the islands, indigenous to Pacific, indigenous to parts of Africa, indigenous to the Holy Lands. Because if you look at our antiquity, it goes back to the beginning of creation because the Mosai says he created the earth for our sakes. Read that in the... 1611 King James edition of the Bible in the book of Edras. Okay. So Choco was one of the primary eras of Portuguese and Spanish slave reading before Columbus's official trip to the Americas. The slaves were Africans had been living on the coast of Colombia for hundreds of years before the arrival of the Europeans to the new world. In fact, some of the very first African slaves to reach North America were Africans captured on the coast of South America by the Spaniards and Dutch then sold to North America, the U.S. See the writings of Peter Martyr Balboa, Ivan Van Sertima. See also the world-famous book, A History of the African Olmecs, published by First Books Library 20... Okay, we don't need to do all of that. Or the work of Susu Economics, The History of the Pan-African Trade, Commerce, Money, and Wealth by First Books Library. Okay, so... Brazil, slavery was abolished in the late 1800s, one of the latest places for it to be abolished. Notice in the, the Caribbean, like with Jamaica, a lot of Yanga. He says Yanga may have been Maroon too, but it was a lot of the Maroons who fought and defeated the British armies. Also, the Maroons went to Haiti, defeated the French because they're descendants of the children of Israel. It doesn't take a whole army to defeat any army when it comes to the most high so if we're righteous and holy then we can just start crying our tears let them reach heaven and the most high will fight for us okay our prayers are righteous and holy they will be answered if they're not then they become sin they become an abomination so a lot of you in these religions with these idols and these saints what do you think that comes from the latins that's not the religion of our fathers. Read the Ten Commandments. No idols. Sabbath. You got to keep the Sabbath. You got to keep the dietary laws. You got to stop those 
idols, those images, those um, carnivals, all those things that you've been taught, it's against the scriptures. And the scriptures is what we're trained from, okay? So it tells you about the genocide and... This is an article, you can read it at raceandhistory.com and it goes over what happened to the Afro-Latin Americans and the blacks in Colombia and racism. Okay, so Negroes, we have to keep our brothers in prayer and we have to work to help to educate them so they know they're not alone even though they're down there with the oppressors and they're going through it every day we're going through it in the americas in north america and everywhere in the world our people are remember the bible says the last empire is going to be the roman empire at the end of esau's kingdom is the beginning of jacob's that follows and that will be led by christ and you know peace will reign upon the earth All right, so with that, I'm going to say shalom for right now. We're praying for you, and y'all got to fight for your rights. Get up, stand up, and fight for your rights, okay? And lift up your head and hold it up high. We know that we'll win the prize. I think that's half pint. All right, so like, share, subscribe. Always remember Psalm 83, pray Psalm 91, pray Psalm 109, pray Psalm 23. And always remember, no weapon formed against you will prosper if we're holy and righteous. And remember, Ezra 15, 21. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense them in their bosom. Thus says the Lord. Okay. Have a wonderful week.